so sorry, it is on a Saturday instead of a Sunday. Don't be shocked by seeing us on the screen at 12 o'clock. It is Ramadan after all, <laughs> and it's the weekend. Most people probably were sleeping. Some of us couldn't even sleep. I haven't slept much. Tried to sleep this morning for about half an hour. That's all I could manage. The rest of the time just can't sleep. I don't know why this year Ramadan is proving to have probably first time in my life completely disturbed my Ramadan uh, sleeping timetable. Oh, oh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alaikum, so everybody. Sorry. Our yeah. first Ramadan weekend. We had our Juma yesterday for the first time. Today is our first Saturday. And we are doing this show today because we can't make it tomorrow. So, welcome. And welcome again. <laughs> welcome and welcome. Welcome while, and welcome. We are a bit slow. While you're speaking, I'm going to lower the camera. The camera is too high. I can see that. So, why don't you just keep on talking to the world while I just. Quickly go and change the conversation. I am not talking to the world. I don't know who am I talking to. So welcome everyone. Let me know who is here and let us know if the sound is working as usual. Um, so welcome. I don't know how you're feeling about Ramadan. I am having a little bit of a... I, have, I was having a little bit of a difficulty. I am a notoriously bad faster and I make a public announcement about this. I find it really, really hard. Um, but today is day five or day four, depending on when you started and depending on how long you have been fasting you are either completely fine and just get on with your life as if nothing has ever happened or or you are struggling so i guess we will go through cycles um, but welcome to the show and we are barefoot institute so those of you who don't know us my name is henrietta savati and i'm the co-founder of the barefoot institute with my husband ajmal masrur and the reason why we set up this institute is something we never talked about the reason why we set up this institute is because we believe that there is a need for a more mature conversation about relationships within our community. So we want to bring you tips and tricks and ideas and conversations about relationship and how you can make um, your relationship stronger. And today we're going to be talking about compassion, how you can make it more compassionate. That's better. Look. Thank you. Immediately improved our quality of broadcasting hopefully yes. do we look younger like this i don't know i don't think so <laughs> i don't think we will change. everyone is desperately wanting to look younger ladies and gentlemen i've got bad news for you nobody will ever look younger even if you do botox and all the other surgeries talking about surgery i nearly had a surgery on my neck yesterday not nearly you did well it was they had to put a needle right into my spine but they had to go from my neck and it was quite a s slow journey. The surgeon was going one millimeter at a time. I was on a stretcher or one of those scanning machine. She would put me in, check where she was, put me, pull me out, put a bit more. And there was a screen in front of me and I could see as the needle, the needle was, was going in. Yeah. She said to me, are you going to be one of those who will faint? I said, no. She goes, I'm just checking. So I was watching and we were talking about it. How does it feel? Do you feel pain? She said to me, and I actually felt pain once or twice. And she was telling me why I was feeling pain. Mm. I've just ruptured your fat. I've just gone through your oh, muscles. No. Oh, sorry. I've just poked into your nerve. Pull oh. back a bit. Wow. Live commentary. I was awake as it was happening. Delicate balance. It was an interesting experience. And she said, <coughs> um, if I um, rupture any major artery in your neck, you could have a stroke. Oops. So quite a scary moment. It was good that you did in Ramadan. And I didn't tell you before I went that this could be the possibility because you didn't know. No, you didn't know it either, did no, you? No, but you, you didn't know at all. You'd have been worried sick or you're not worried. About the stroke. I knew yeah. that you were doing the surgery. But yeah, about the stroke know. I'm talking about. Yeah. If I had told you that was a possibility of a stroke, I think you'd probably have said don't do it. No, I wouldn't have said that. No? I'm no. just asking. You need to sleep. You need to get your, you know, joints back and whatever. Well, alhamdulillah, I'm good. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. That was because I've not been able to sleep properly for a little while because of my back pain. But alhamdulillah, not I'm feeling good. Not because I am bothering him or anything. Not because I am nasty. It's no, no, no. Yeah. couldn't see because his back is we not are, working. We are all compassionate to one another. Today's uh, discussion is all about compassion. Do we have anyone online? I don't know. If I think people are sleeping. It's, 11, uh, uh, you know, uh, 12 o'clock. Nobody has yet woken up, most likely. We have Ruzi Bibi. Welcome, Ruzi. Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. It's a completely different audience, I suppose. Not our usual one. Because the usual one would be expecting at uh, on 11 Sunday. On yes. 11 sorry, sorry. No, if, if those usual ones see this uh, live feed afterwards, um, apologies from both myself and Hannah for not being on time. Oh, Jana is here. She's our Welcome usual. Jana Hall, yes. And Fatima Um Hamza. Assalamu alaikum. Good alaikum morning. Wa wa I think people slowly, slowly are waking up. And I think they can uh, hear us screaming here. And it's a weekend, you know. I, I'm, I appreciate that you probably, some of you are probably still in bed. And I'm going to exercise compassion towards them. Yes, of course. Give you lots of compassion. Compassion 
is a fr is a is a French word, com no Latin word, mm. apparently. My, you my, tell us. My bits, <laughs> my bits, bits and bobs of Latin. If my daughter was around, she'd have corrected me by corrected me by now. Latin or Greek word? I can't remember. One of my good friend who is a Latin expert keeps on telling me com passion. I think passion. Passion. They are two different words. Passion, if you were to take it, is mercy. Com is companionship. You put them together, you're willing to be a companion of mercy with a person who is suffering. Mm. That's called compassion. And I guess maybe one of the things that we can start talking about is what is the difference between compassion and there are lots of other things. And I will mix, it, we'll mix talk, it with. Your friend is just saying, I thought today was Sunday. Yes, Jana, it is Sunday. If we can get you confused on today by because we are on the screen, it is Sunday, imagine. <laughs> Uh, we actually put out a notice saying we can't do Sunday tomorrow because we've got I've got a commitment somewhere else, unfortunately. Um, it's quite important and I can't escape it. So we thought we'll do it today and we did send out a notice. So thank you for being here. Imam Ma'roof says, Salamu alaikum, good to see you. Alhamdulillah, Zakallah khair. Ruzi Bibi says, I had a stroke last year in June and finally mm. feel so bad not fasting this year. Ever since I was 11, I have never stopped fasting until now. I feel so low. Mashallah. Rosie Bibi, I'm really sorry to hear that mm. you had a stroke. I hope you've made a full recovery. Allah bless you. Don't worry. Allah says in the Quran, and Allah's compassion is very, very powerful for us. He said, mm. if you are unwell or you're traveling, you don't have to fast. And if you can't fast because of a condition, all you do is give fidya. Give away a, an amount of money that could feed a person for a day for the m number of fasts that you've missed because of your condition or your illnesses. Usually if it's an illness, you could make it up later. But if it turns into a condition which is a lifelong one and you're unable to make it, then I'm, I'm afraid you give fidya. So Allah is being very compassionate mm. to us. Uh, Luciana says, glad to see you again. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Luciana. Welcome. Good to see you too. We are here, which is most important. We are here. So instead of not being here on a Sunday and disappear completely, we thought we'd do it on Saturday. So please do share the video with anyone you think might benefit from it. So as I said before, we are the Barefoot Institute and all we do is help building confident Muslim families. And today we are talking about compassion. So One of the most important thing I want to start with, it, the biggest act of compassion that you can do for anyone who's getting married is give them a book. <laughs> <laughs> you, had to, you had to do that, didn't Of course, you? <laughs> of course. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ramadan. Give them a gift. It is coming up very soon. How many of you have not bought this book yet? I'm um, saying this because I don't want to keep the copies of books in our house. It's been printed to benefit people. So if you haven't bought it yet, please be, buy my book or my wife's book, Head to Her Heart, and mine is 10 Steps to Getting Married and Staying Married. That's the best thing you can do. I say this because there is a person who's getting married recently coming up very soon and I asked them you're getting married soon have you read a single book on marriage they said no why haven't you read anything I didn't know I had to read a book on marriage before I get married somebody said mm. it is as silly as that but it is as basic as that most people don't do it so please brothers and sisters get a book a copy of it is available on our book website barefootinstitute.com forward slash bookstore and of course you can give it as a gift to somebody or you can buy it for yourself or your family your son your daughter whoever it is and Ruth Bibi says nice gift Gift of knowledge indeed, Ruzi Bibi. Could you buy a few copies for yourself and others? Please do. It's a great time. Anyway, let's talk about the topic. Let's talk about compassion. Because you are you are heart smart. So let's talk about compassion. Well, I am not heart smart. Well, I am heart smart. I'm all about heart smart and understanding. But compassion um, is, is a topic that I, I believe we mix it with a lot of other things. We mix it with empathy. We mix it with um, even mercy. It's not quite the same thing. And the reason I think it's important is because in relationships it really plays out. There you go. Look. Somebody has caught up on this. Sash Rafiq says, I've just been married or six months now. Such a good thought. I'm sure it will be very useful. I'm telling you it will be very useful. Oh, sister. even if you're married 10, 15 years, 20 years, it's always a useful book to, to read. Like this, just look uh, at our bookshelves. We read books all the time about relationships. A lot of people who have read this book, they have said, where has this book been for a long time? For example, we had Dr. Akram Nadwi saying, extremely beneficial, very practical, and easy to understand. We will recommend it to all our students. We had Yasir Qadi said, written in an engaging style, what will surely be of enormous benefit to couples who are looking for practical guide to help them better their relationship. So please do, Sash, place an order right now, inshallah. Jana Hall, thank you very much for your sympathy. There you go. Sorry to hear about your painful experience, Brother Ajmal. May Allah give you good health. Ameen. Jana Hall says, I can listen to you, you both forever. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's very kind of you. Um, Jana, I'm still feeling sorry for you already. <laughs> That's my compassion. <laughs> 
So compassion, sympathy, empathy, mercy, a lot of concepts we mix up with compassion. Shall so we clarify I, them? Yeah, I think we need to because in, especially in relationships. So as I'm walking along the road, mm. you see me falling down. Mm. Actually, you see me falling down. Mm. Because you're my wife, you'll run to help me. I laugh first. But, <laughs> okay, but you will run to help me somehow. <laughs> but if it's an ordinary person going by, mm. you see them falling down or falling down, you would want to help them. Or you see them on the floor, you will have something in your heart. What's the first reaction? Usually, in terms of, what, how do we defi- call it? Empathy. Sympathy first. Sympathy first. Yeah, because, empathy. oh, somebody's fallen. Mm. Because you're familiar with fall. People right. have fallen. Now, if he has fallen on his face, for example, and you've never fallen on his face, you will not empathize. Because you don't know what it means. But you'll have sympathy. Mm. Because you've fallen before and you know the pain. So, in order to learn compassion, you need to go through these stages. The first stage is sympathy, to recognize somebody's pain, simply to recognize it. Understand that somebody's in pain. Have that human gut reaction, somebody's in pain, whether it's your family member or outsider. Okay, so the person is on the floor, you go there to help them. First thing you do is sympathize, but you see them falling on their knee, and you've fallen before on your knee. What reaction do you have now? So you feel it, you literally feel it. It's called empathy. Empathy. I am with you in the sense of I understand your pain. I've had that before. I know what it means to fall. How many a times have I seen people mm. having accidents and I've said, "Oh, that feels it." I know the pain. I know the pain. You know when you get your funny bone hit on your mm. on your arm, all of us can feel it because all of us have had this experience. So it's called empathy. Empathy is a bit more than sympathy. Sympathy is almost distant. Empathy is very inside. It's there. The next level is. You go there and you put your hand forward and say, let me be with you. Let me sit with you here if you need me. Let me walk with you. Let me be your companion in pain. If you need to go to hospital, I'll come with you. If you want me to wait until the ambulance comes, I'll come. I'll wait here. If you Have you got a family member who I can call? I'm willing to do anything to help you. That's called compassion. Mm. So sympathy, empathy and compassion. Great. And what I what is interesting is what I want to bring in is that the difference between empathy and sympathy is that the body has an incredible capacity. Is that the reason why you can be empathetic is because you have experienced something and your body stored it as an information. So what happens is that instead of thinking about what happens to somebody else, you feeling it is coming from the source that your body knows because the body has done it before. And it's called somatic experience. And that experience is stored as part of your memory. Um, and it's, it's partly part of neuroscience, which I which I, I was about to say, it sounds about. like your, your expertise, the neuroscience. Of I it. love talking about this because I think in relationships, it's, it's a very important distinction that I can sympathize with some of the things that you go through, but I don't know them because I've never had it. That's sympathy. That's sympathy. That's in your brain, right? That's something that I can think about. Yeah, I understand it. Okay, great. But I don't know what to do with it. But empathizing is when I literally feel the emotional pain of somebody because I know it myself mm. and I stored it up in my body as an information so if you're a couple you know this you know quite easily Constantly. you can identify is that it's one thing to say oh I'm really sorry um, I, I hear you and I think about what you're going through it's it's another way of saying how can I be with you because you recognize the same you know you know in the you know come in a, in a couple relationship Anna sympathy and empathy has very little space it has to always be compassion more. So, if I've been with you for now 19 years, not if I have actually, 19 <laughs> <You> years. <have. laughs> 19 years we've been married. In that 19 years, if I have not developed compassion for my wife and remained in the in the phase of sympathy and empathy, I haven't connected with her vulnerability and she hasn't connected with my vulnerability. That inner space that we create, the sakina we create, sakina in Arabic, which means a safe space, is a space where you don't sympathize and empathize only. You're readily available for compassion. That's why you're married. It's companionship in everything, good and bad, pain and joy, suffering or happiness. It doesn't matter where you are. You're companion in relationship. Therefore, you are compassionate, not sympathetic. Because I'm sympathetic to my neighbor falling up fall on the floor. Mm. I could express my com- empathy for somebody else having something outside who is not related to me. But my wife, my husband. My children, we feel compassion for them. If your son falls down, if our son falls down, hurts himself, what do you do? You drop everything in the world. Of course. Why? It's not sympathy and empathy. No, no. It's compassion. It's actually highest degree of compassion. 
we are trying to instill in you and in us that level of recognition. Mm -hmm. If you don't recognize in your relationship, there is no room for sympathy and empathy. Sympathy and empathy is for outsiders. Compassion is for your partner. Then we haven't really understood relationship. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's not just compassion that you create in a marital relationship. It's compassion for siblings. It's compassion for family members. It's and, and this is really an interesting point because as you look at it, our entire human journey is about what? Is to achieve the highest level of compassion before we go from this earth. And, and that means we focus on your immediate surroundings and the people in that immediate surrounding first. And as you extend and extend, you reach a higher level of compassion, which is which goes beyond relationship levels, which be beyond blood level or whatever it is. But it's it's that journey that we all have to take. And and let's be honest, not all of us. Uh, that's another reason why we talk about these things is because it's not something that we learn at school. There is no education, very little education about this. We don't we don't learn it from home very often. We don't see it. We we don't quite connect what compassion means and and how to practice it or what to do with it. So. I think your, 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 your point is very powerful, that compassion is not, only for your, or not, is not only for your husband or your wife, it's also for your other significant relationship. Or for anyone at, at the later stages we develop, because I think it takes work and it takes a whole life journey to actually, you know, look at, look at the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi look at many examples of people of high uh, knowledge, all the prophets, is that they they worked continuously because it's we have maybe we have a baseline of compassion that what we are born with um, but it takes work it that's why Prophet said recognition. that you can only be a true believer if you love for your brother or your sister what you love for yourself exactly. because he wants us to elevate our situation from being just the distant uh, empathizer sympathizer to creating a brotherhood sisterhood a fraternity of believers who have compassion for one another so subhanallah it is such a powerful uh, testimony of our faith. We start from developing that at home. But because we're talking about relationships, significant relationships, we're talking about husband, wife, parents, children, siblings, we're talking about brothers, sisters, and mothers, fathers, father-in-law, mother-in-law, all of that in immediate significant relationship, I'd like to say to you, ask yourself this question. Who, can, who have you deprived of your compassion over the last one year? Just the one year. Mm. In the last one year, who have you deprived of your compassion? If you can share with us on that side where you get to speak to us, put out, put out your thoughts, I'd love to read them out to you, everybody. Um, many of you have responded. Um, Salma Rahman says, Salaamu Alaikum with Ajmal and Sister Henrietta. Salma Rahman says, it's, go it's really good realization point. It is, isn't it? It's an amazing point. So how many of you and who has been in your family, who have you, who have you deprived of your compassion? I can think of one already. I can think of one in my head. How about yourself? Yes. Compassion for ourselves. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point, Salma Rahman. We, are we compassionate to ourselves enough? We don't think enough about ourselves. But sometimes the problem with that is that there is also a possibility of becoming selfish. I think if you are not compassionate, if you are not able to be compassionate with yourself, you can't be compassionate to anybody else. But be careful though, because your compassion for yourself mm. could actually turn out to be very selfish. Very selfish and self-serving, rather than... That's not compassion, that's self-indulgence. Yes, so we need to be very careful of the differences. Yeah. That's why I mention it. But what I mean is that if you can really practice self-compassion... So I, I give you an example. Um, I had this um, couple that I was working with. No, I'll give you another example. So I was working with somebody um, in my practice, and we were talking about um, self-love, self-care, and self-compassion. And literally, the person had no idea of what self-compassion means. She thought it's about going shopping, doing her nails, you know, lying in bed, not doing any housework, giving herself a break. That's not self-compassion. Self-compassion is when you are able to see what's happening to you and how you respond in the most, the kindest, most mindful way. And it's, it's a really hard thing to do, actually, if you think about this, because self-compassion isn't about ignoring if you have done something wrong. It's not about um, taking just time off just for the sake of it. I, I actually say it's not about shopping. It's not about nails. It's, it's not self-care. Self-compassion and self-care are two different things. Some of us are too obsessed with self-care. Most, yeah, a lot of us are obsessed with, oh, I'm, I'm caring after, looking after myself. I need to go away. I still I don't understand. Do... Uh, forgive me for being such a, I don't want to say bimbo, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> forgive me for saying that. I don't understand. Why would somebody sit there and get their nail done for hours? What pleasure is there? I don't know. I don't do nails. No, but I didn't I, say you don't. I don't want to judge. But the, I want to understand. Oh, God. Self indulgence is what you've mentioned. I want to understand. So don't brush me aside. I'm why, not. why would you, why would people get pleasure out of shaving their eyebrows and then putting a line on it again? Why would somebody get so much pleasure in putting so much paint on their face, thinking it's making them look better? Something else is at play. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. All I'm saying is, what is it that makes you feel... What drives you? Yeah, and why do you feel pleasure to something so aesthetic, which actually doesn't really reflect your inner being, because your inner being is naturally beautiful. Mm. What are you trying to cover up? And I often say this to people. So self-indulgence is one thing. Self-care is something else. But self-compassion is something completely different. And today... We're trying to create the area where you have self-compassion, of course, and run away and get away from self-indulgence and self-care and focus on self-compassion and compassion with other people. A lot of people have said lots of things, by the way, especially home, especially this one here. Read Susie, that one. Uh, to husband first. First of all, um, for parents and brother-in-law. Uh -huh. no, I think it's the answer to the question of who didn't have any... Um, oh, okay. Sorry, okay. So you have not been compassionate towards your husband for the for first and then for your parents and for your brother-in-law. And then Luciana says, but unfortunately I also keep forgetting about myself. myself. Self-compassion, yes. Or Rusi said, I was always compassionate towards everyone since I was young until I, last year I got hurt from left and right, which had... Uh, which led to stroke. Yes. Allah Akbar. I'm so sorry. Sorry to hear that. Um, Mumtaz Chaudhry says, Assalamu alaikum. Excellent topic. Thank you. Walid Khan says, Brother Ajbal and Sister Hamriyata. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Can you become so compassionate to others that you forget about yourself? Yes, you can. Yes. And it often happens. Yes. And I think it's a really interesting point because when you are, you are pouring compassion to the other, there is something that gets lost in the way. And relationship is always a two-way. Uh, relationship is a mirror, Hannah. It's not two it ways, is. it's a mirror. But, well, it, uh, that's what I mean. Prophet said this. Mm. Um, al mu'minu akhul mus al muslimu akhul muslim. A muslim is a brother or sister to one another. And mir'atul muslim is a mirror, mirror to one to another. Other. Now, yeah. what does mirroring mean? So if I'm being so compassionate to you, but you're not mirroring that back to me, and I'm forgetting myself, something is happening. What's yeah. happening? You're taking it selfishly. You're not giving it back to me. So I've forgotten myself. Right. So not only have I forgotten myself, because I've been so compassionate towards you, but you haven't been giving me anything in return. So from being compassionate, I then become a carer for you. Yes. And then there's a dependency which develops, codependency. Yes. And then you are not able to see the bo the lines between what's the difference between you and me and where is the relationship. And I want, I want to bring my father example here, if you don't mind. My okay. father, when he was very unwell for the last 10 years of his life, mm. my mother became compassionate towards him every day. But be from being a compassionate p carer to him, she became the sole carer for my father. So from being, from playing, from doing things out of compassion, it became a duty, a, a, a chore. Yeah. I, I know my mother never has complained about it. But when my father passed away, yeah. something else happened to my mother. On top of missing my father, but she suddenly started flourishing. I could see her. Yeah. I could feel her energy again. It wasn't sucked away by the 24 care, 7 care that she had to do. That was a duty she did, which is a good job. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward her for that. Mm. But in that process, she wasn't compassionate to herself. And we saw she lost her weight. She became very thin, very weak, very fragile. But since my father passed away, my mother's health has improved slightly. She's become a bit more weighty, not mm. fat, alhamdulillah. She doesn't have any conditions. The reason I share this with you, brothers mm. and sisters, even though it's my mother, is because the, the line between the two is forgotten. Compassionate to yourself and compassionate to the other. Both are essential part of our faith. But one doesn't come without the other. And also, if you think about this, compassion in practice, if it's in the mirroring uh, practice, I can give all that, like in the case of, of uh, my mother-in-law, I can give and give, but along the way, she lost not just herself, but maybe other relationships on she the did. way. She did. We didn't get so, anything from her. I yeah, so, so it's, it's a really interesting part is that you need to remember that when you are over-giving, if you don't fill up your cup, this is what they say, if you don't give compassion to yourself, and even if it means half an hour, one hour, or a couple of hours a day that, that it was required at the time, you save and preserve essential energy so you can actually look at other relationships in your life, not just the one. I think a dependency here is a really big issue because when you overshare, overgive, dependency develops, and it's very difficult to get away from that. The relationship should never consume any of us. I can be compassionate, 
you know, it just, I always have this thought, I, I, I share it with you, I always have this thought that what would happen if I become disabled, God forbid, what would I expect of you to do if I couldn't move? Because, uh, you know, currently I'm doing a lot of running around, um, house and kids, and what would happen if I wasn't able to do those things? And I was in a wheelchair, for example, and I know we would adjust, but there is something that is really interesting that... But you will be resentful, because you would say, I've given everything to everybody, look at me now. You'll really be upset about it because we did not give you anything back and you did not invest in yourself. I'm not saying you as a person, yes. because you're very good at investing in yourself in, a, in, a, in that way, no problem. But brothers and sisters, so compassion is a two-way street. Mm. It's not one way. Look, there are some more messages. Messages are very important so that people Lots feel we are with them. Um, so we've done that. Salma says, yes. Ruzi Bibi says, yes, saying out of experience. Imam Maruf says, I think we continuously deprive our parents. They are, what? Septuagarian, I've not come across that word before. Um, but we can't share our lives with them um, at this the stage. stage Subhanallah. Yeah, that's true, you know. They give, give, give. But when they're old, when they need, we're not there for them because we're too busy doing our own things. That's a very good point. Ruzi Bibi says you can, um, you can, yes, you can. I'm saying out of experience. Jana Halt says amazing point. Thank you. Thank you very much. So who else have you deprived of your compassion for the last one year? Who have you deprived of the last of compassion? For the last oh, I don't have to go very far. I just a couple of weeks, um, probably a month or so, my mother. Because I, you're angry with her. I am still, you know, I'm still processing some of the things that my, that's, that's been happening. But I have, I think I have deprived her my compassion because I am, I, I guess for me, compassion is one of those things where I'm willing to see another point of view. And that's those of you who are out there in the audience, maybe stubborn, as stubborn as I am. It's, it's not an easy thing to see someone else's point of view. And compassion is actually that journey when you realize that you have nothing to do with what that person is doing. The person is doing whatever they feel is right, is right for them. But it's not personal. And even though it looks like it's personal, it's not. Actually, it's nothing to do with it. It's, and compassion is that journey when you understand that what is happening to me is not against me it's my practice of how can i see someone else's point of view and that's for me that's the root um to to compassion is can i see someone else's point of view and and for some of us stubborn people like me it's quite difficult because whatever reason and not, it's not because we don't want to it's just we don't have the practice and it literally takes a couple of extra you know graveling of the brain to to realize that i what would happen if i started looking at from her point of view what would I think of the situation if I looked at her her side of the story what would happen if I stepped into her shoes and say well this is what's happening and and that just gives us a lot more space which uh, is what you said to me which is what you said to me you were struggling with and I remember still insisting that you should look at her from her perspective she's your mother ultimately she's doing what she thinks is right though not from your perspective yeah, I still think I still think that it's it's not it's not a question of right or wrong. It's the journey is that can I I can still say what I need to say. I still feel hurt by by some of the things that she is doing and she has done, but ultimately it cannot kill the relationship. It can it can I cannot decide not to be in touch or not to be, you know, in contact with my mother because she's my mother. So So that the question is can your anger can your anger dissolve your compassion? Or should oh, your mind can totally. <laughs> can your compassion dissolve your anger? I'm asking both the questions. Right. With your mother, can you find compassion inside yourself to be able to dissolve your anger right now? Or is your anger dissolving your compassion faster than you can cope the other way around? I'm trying to locate our, our logo because we don't have our logo on our screen. I'm getting irritated. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. You're going to put it up maybe. I will, inshallah. Oh. Yes, it's, I, I think it's, um, uh, this is why... Ramadan is a really great time and we are always always encouraged to remedy the relationship that we are in in the month of Ramadan because it's the month of um, the Quran month of mercy month of compassion so it's it's an extra for me it's an extra way of thinking it's an extra um, angle that I think about um, compassion in a very different day actually day before yesterday yesterday um, day before yesterday was a very very hard day for me the third day was a very difficult day to when i was fasting um I, w I wondered why what happened just usually it takes me about four or five days to get used to the the idea of fasting um, at all but the third day was really uh, really really difficult and i realized that when we are fasting we are literally emptying ourselves from not just the food 
that even though we eat a little bit, but we are emptying ourselves from the usual way of thinking. And that always touches me in a very, it, it takes me to a very tender place. Yesterday I couldn't stop crying. I was crying for the whole morning, burst out, in and out of bursts of cries. And, and I just didn't, didn't know what to do with it. But it's because of the, the parts that are unknown to us. When we reach that part, it, it takes us by surprise and, and we have to sit with it. And it's, compassion is extremely important because even when you have a particular idea about your relationship, whatever stage you are at with your husband or with your wife, you have already made up your mind. But when you actually open yourself and see something that you have never dared to look at, that's a very tender place. And you need to hold on to it because it also brings truth about the relationship. This is how you start seeing, you know, in, in the boardroom, I always say that see any relationship in 360. Don't look at the relationship. It's, it's not linear. It's you have to look around and you have to take in every information. Even be aware of your you. blind spot. Yes, absolutely. Because your blind spot with your mother was your emotion. I am entitled to my mother's attention. Why isn't she giving me enough attention? You became angry because of her action. I get that. I understand that. It's understandable. Um, I can't be compassionate towards you because of that, because I don't relate to that. But I also think you are a powerful person with so much compassion that your compassion can dissolve your anger. It's just that your stubbornness is coming on its way, yeah. right? And it's about knowing what emotion when to, to let that go. When, which emotion to deal with at what stage. Yeah. So if you are now cracking away at compassion, but the stubbornness is on the way, you're not trying to remove the stubbornness, then you're not being compassionate. You'll, or anger is on the way. You're not dealing with the anger, but you're talking about compassion. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, what we're sharing with you is our life story so that you can see the dip, separation on dip and, 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 and the way of doing it. Right. If I want to be... So as we were talking, I often thinking in my head, somebody I've deprived my compassion from, what is it that I've been holding on to? I've been angry with them. I've been upset and let down by some of the things that they have done. So I'm allowing my upset, my let down feeling and also my anger to prevent my compassion from reaching them. How do I know if I actually reach out to them with compassion, they will not actually realize what they've done was wrong? How do I know that they will not turn around and say, I'm really sorry for what I've done. I should have realized it long before, but I didn't. Mm. So I, we think we only need to sit down and think. Okay, identify one person that you've been depriving your emotion, uh, compassion, mm. uh, uh, one that person, and then I write down on a piece of paper, what is it that I've been doing with that person? What's stopping me from reaching that person with compassion? Your anger, your resentment, all the feelings that you have, why don't you deal with each of those feelings? And if they're coming on the way, if you can remove them, your compassion re will reach them. That's, what, that's, what, what, that's all we're saying right now. Yeah, and it's what is really interesting is that some of us don't know, but you know, from, from research we know that we have about 450 emotions. We operate on four or five. Seven. Or seven, literally. So if you know the basics and then, um, is the camera gone? Yes, camera looks like it's gone, but you carry on talking while I go and fix the camera. They can hear you still. So, so we operate on a very, very limited um, a range of emotions. And what we end up doing is we hold on to those basic emotions and we are practically just unable to reach compassion so re remember c compassion is a state of being it's something it's a state of your heart it's a state of um heart mind and body it's a it's a connected way of being um with yourself oh we are back yes we are back with slightly with a different, different <laughs> camera <laughs> oh, luckily wow. i have the second camera waiting you probably have it. to move it down a bit it's very high but carry on talking while i go and adjust it Oh, the te technology is not helping us today. We need a technical um, expert or we need someone who, who, can, who can produce these programs for us. Um, so compassion is a, is a state of being. It's something that you think about, you feel, you understand, you cognitively... I don't know how it, it is. You probably need to put it don't down. Don't worry, there. carry on. <laughs> Keep, carry on talking, I'll fix it. Um, so it, it, it also requires a cognitive abilities. And, and I, was, um, I teach emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence to couples. Uh, one of the things we go through is that there are four levels to be able to understand. Compassion is one of the highest level. Compassion is a part of spiritual intelligence. This is the highest level of spiritual intelligence. It starts with physical intelligence, then we go into cognitive intelligence, we go emotional intelligence, and we go spiritual intelligence. So compassion, as you can see, is on the top of this range. So it's really important that we understand that it's not 
that's why I'm, I'm saying physically compassion isn't about doing things for yourself having a hot bath or one of those it, it's not physical is to to be physically ready cognitive is to be understanding the emotion that you are struggling with what is on the way of compassion and emotionally what are the emotions that are on the way for me it's usually anger and we all have a default position every single one of us have one or two default emotions that we resort to that prevents us from becoming the most compassionate self that we can be right now it's my camera that's making me very upset i know but i think i can deal with the camera now that i've fixed it so brothers and sisters um, in life many challenges are thrown even in our emotions as we are dealing with our most significant relationship and right now for example we're having a conversation the camera dies we don't have a studio to then immediately bring up the technical technical people to fix it even television programs they die sometimes bbc freezes up and you don't know what's going on mm. you have to so forgive us for that let's come back to the conversation that we're having which is to do with our relationship i've got a few people here jana holt says i love this compassion is a state of being working on the uh, on ourselves to understand and related our need for love and care especially with family let's ask you a second question who have you demonstrated your love and compassion forget the love who have you demonstrated your compassion to in the most significant manner lately to my kids okay to your kids why i don't know not they, that i'm being they, jealous but hang on no Tell no me. they are just under my nose all the time and they require a lot of compassion i think do they require a lot of compassion or is it that you are doing it because you think they need it no i i think they do because they make so many mistakes and i have to watch myself and I they make mistakes so you make mistakes and both of us make mistakes but i yeah i think it's it's my children that i have to practice most compassion for mm. i have been very compassionate to you um I think lately um because of the past no just generally okay and I think I've experienced a different part of me that I wasn't very aware of in terms of um level of patience and compassion towards you for what perhaps you're going through in your life um not really causing any trouble hopefully too much from my perspective at least um and I have been feeling genuinely that I'm being more compassionate than I've been before maybe because it's also the age when you don't no longer need to be fiery and um demanding because as life is you're nearly 50 hey only 30 What years to go 20 years to go <laughs> i just need to lucky. i need to just get on with my life so brothers and sisters explore each and every relationship you have i have been thinking about my own siblings my brothers and sisters oh. why am i struggling with few of them why am i not struggling with others in fact each and every one of them would bring a different struggle in our life oh. how can i overcome the barriers that prevent me barriers that come on the way so, uh, from my compassion how can i overcome that how can i be more compassionate towards them i've been thinking about it mm. more and more and it's also uh, a, a, a very human thing to do as we age we start actually investing more time and energy in our significant relationship i have got a friend who is doing my 30 rules of life quran and he in the open program said i'm struggling with my siblings Mm. Can you can we can we do anything about it? So you think about your siblings. What about you? Oh, oh absolutely. I I I find myself as as I go through this journey um of compassion, I find myself a lot more allowing, a lot more fluid about. I don't I don't get caught up as much um as I used to. I think there's there's in, in me as well there is a significant difference between how much I get caught up with the with the things that people do and I don't hold on to them like this, but I I'm I'm trying to, I I let go things a lot easier than I used to and I think it's only in the last year or so I'm beginning to feel that it's it's not worth it really because the pain that I used to hold um it's just my pain and the person who ho- hurt me I would never know unless I talk about this unless I discuss it and it doesn't have to be confrontation I just have to tell people how I feel about what they do to me um it's a, it's a really interesting point because I think that's part of my compassionate journey that's a good point that when you're going through the pain nobody else would know unless unless you tell them yeah so how many of you are actually prepared to tell your siblings your families your mom your, your dad your brother your sister your wife or your husband that actually you're struggling with your compassion towards them yes. you know what i'm going to do i'm i'm promising i'll do it today okay. i'm going to write to my um, family members who i'm struggling with i'm going to tell them that that's what i'm struggling with mm. i've been 
I've, I made, I've made up my mind. I will not do it. I will not sit on it anymore because they don't know. Most likely they don't know. Well, that's the thing is that there is so many of us have people in our life. We put them, I call it, we put them in a closet or we put them in a dungeon um, and we keep them there because we think, oh, as long as I don't look at it, it doesn't matter because I don't, they don't bother me. But actually they do because you have probably never told them how you feel and you have never expressed that this is the reason why I cannot be compassionate with you. And they will never know. And they will never know. Now, the thing is, you have to be compassionate with yourself because when you tell them and if you don't get the answer that you want mm. or the relationship is not going to be fixed, that's not the point. The point is you are you need to tell them you're not doing it to fix the relationship you're not doing it you're doing it to practice compassion so can we get that right you're not doing it to fix your relationship you're doing it because you want to practice compassion so you're sending out an olive branch to this person saying hey i've been thinking why have i not found enough courage guts within myself why haven't i not why haven't i found enough compassion in myself to be compassionate towards you what is it that's stopping me and I've realized what the problem is. The problem is me, right? I'm the one who have stopped it. So I'm going to send you a bunch of olive, olive branch as a sign of my compassion. What you do with it is your business. I'm not going to interpret it in any other way except that I am the one who is offering a gesture of mm. compassion. Just, that's all you're doing. Yeah, Ruth is saying, I did and they never had any feelings. Well, you did your best. You did your part. You did your part. And, and this is really, really important that in, in you re realize this, that this is our psychology is such that we function better when we don't carry the burdens. People often misunderstand how difficult and how heavy emotions are. We carry these emotions. Salma is talking exactly your language. I found myself letting go of things more now than before. Than before. Yes, because, you know, there, there's a point where you're just so tired of carrying these emotions with you. They are not worth it. But you do need to make your say. You need to say what you need to say to the person who has hurt you. It's a way of practicing compassion. I'm doing it not because I want to fix it. I have a friend of mine who actually I had a really, really ponderous um, relationship three years ago. And I've never actually told her how I feel or how I felt, the way she treated me. We are not speaking. We are not friends anymore. And I realized that I would not choose her as a friend where I am now. She would not be my friend. But I still haven't told her how I felt. And I don't know um, if in Ramadan I will get the courage to do it. I, I am planning to do this. Um, but it's not because you want to fix a relationship. It's because you want to get rid of the emotions that are heavy and too much and you don't want to carry it anymore. That's right. Ruzi Bibi, your point about I did and they never had any feelings is a very important one for everyone to know. You don't reach out because you want something in return. You reach out because you want to send them your compassion. That's it. And you see, people's reaction is if you say they didn't have any feelings, is that's where they are. Mm. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to say that we need to meet the people where they are. If this is where they are, you need to be compassionate. You need to let that go. And they will come back. Who knows when Maybe. and how, but they might come back. But you did your part and you are meeting them where they are. And it's always hard. It's very hard. It's very hard to go with the idea, oh, I'm opening myself up. I'm vulnerable and I'm telling you how I feel. And sometimes you really get a slap back. But... But that's, that's part of the journey. That's a part of compassionate journey is that you did your part. That's where you are self-compassionate. A man came to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's poor. He needs some zakat money. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has collected it. The man comes and grabs Prophet's shirt, mm. shakes it, saying, hey, give me some money. I'm, I need it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam receives a mark on his neck from his shirt's collar. Mm. The companions watch it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says nothing. He replies smilingly. He says to the companions, please give him something. They gave it to him. And the man took it and left. What's that? He demonstrated the highest degree of compassion. Even to the person who came and hurt him. That person was in need. Prophet ﷺ realized that that person is need, in need. Yeah, so and his actions are dependent, correct. coming driven from that need. And he wasn't thinking. He was poor. He thought Muhammad ﷺ was depriving of any wealth that he is entitled to. So he demanded it. Mm -hmm. And Prophet ﷺ smiled and gave it back to them. Gave it to this man without asking for anything, no conditions attached. Here, take it. I'm, I'm compassionate towards you. I'm willing to walk your pain. It doesn't matter. So brothers and sisters, don't expect anything in return when you're demonstrating compassion to anybody. You're doing it for your own good. If you do it for your own good, you will realize compassion actually elevates you, takes you to a place where you were not before. If you don't practice compassion, it actually reduces you to, in the Quran, Allah says, mm. Allah says, 
وهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها أولئك كالأنعام بل هم على أضل They have got eyes with which they can't see. They've got ears, but they can't hear. They've got heart, but they can't feel. In fact, they're like animals. Then Allah says, no, they're not like animals. They're worse than animals. Mm. When you lose the possibilities of seeing and hearing and feeling the other person's pain and suffering and have no compassion, we stoop ourselves low, lower than the lowest of the creation. Mm. And we don't want to do that. That's why this whole conversation we're having today. Mm. How can we make this Ramadan a Ramadan of compassion? Reach out to people who you have deprived your compassion for. And say to them that you are sending them compassion today. Mm. A box full of compassion. Box. I think we should make a box of chocolate called compassion. So cheesy. What do you think? <laughs> My wife doesn't like it. Salma Rahman says, Prophet Sallallahu looked underneath the emotion of that man. Yes, he did. Yeah. I think it's very hard to have that compassion. But can be done. Takes patience and training. Yes. And this is where your neuroscience comes in. Train your brain. Absolutely, because uh, you see, we are used to particular ways of being. We are used to what we see in compassion, how, how our parents practice compassion, what they did, what was compassion for them. We pick it up, not because they told us or they taught us. We pick it up because that's what we see. We can't literally like sponge. We soak up the experience of what compassion is. And if there is not much compassion in our families um, at home, that's what you're going to take with you. It's called neuroplasticity. You pick up the pattern of thinking, the pattern of emotion, and you take the experience with you in, in so much more detailed level that we, we ever understand. But this is literally how we learn emotional intelligence. This is how we learn how to speak about our emotions, how we connect with each other, how we practice compassion. is all to do with what we see at home. Yes. Brothers and sisters, what are you waiting for? The invitation, an invitation from Malakul Maut, mm. the angel of death, that it's time for you to go and you did not exercise compassion. One of the dying regret of a nurse, sorry, not a nurse, a person, a nurse who did a survey. And she did a survey of uh, uh, people in hospice. I think she did it over five years. Five years, or a year, yeah. five regrets of the dying. There's Correct. a book about this as well. And the top regret was, I did not spend more time with my family. The biggest regret was I did not spend more time with my family. So your family is most significant and with them you should be demonstrating your compassion. If you haven't done that, it's time to do it, brothers and sisters. Oh. Sorry, did I just pull that? Um, <laughs> yes, fine, it's, it's okay. Um, it's time for you to do that right now. Family will not be there forever for you in the same way if you do not give them compassion. Yes, they will remain because of blood, because of ties, but if you want to have a quality of relationship, you must take it one notch up. Mm. And that one notch up is compassion. And as Muslims, we're supposed to be compassionate on an extended level with all the believers. Allah says in the Quran very beautifully, Muhammadur Rasulullahi walladina ma'ahu ashiddaw ala al-kuffar ruhamau baynahum. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions, they are very strong against those who disbelieve. They don't compromise in matters of principle. But between themselves, they're extremely compassionate. But their description is given, You see them in prostration and bowing down, seeking the pleasures of Allah. Pleasure of Allah. So believers are firm when it comes to principles. But between them, extremely compassionate. And that's what we're talking about today. In the month of Ramadan, see if you can do more for compassion. So before we finish, Hannah, let's give them some practical tips as to what they can do. Okay. Give them your top three tips as to how they can be compassionate. Oh, um, so my number one, uh, number one tip is always, I always go back to this. Know, know what is the emotion that you're really struggling with. And reflect and remove and do anything and everything that you need to do to work through that emotion instead of pushing it away, instead of taking it on board, whether it's a therapist, it's a couple of coaching sessions, whatever you are doing, but know the emotion that is keeping you away from your most compassionate self. This is what I find personally the most helpful That's thing. number one. Yep. Get to know the emotion that you're struggling with. What's your number two? Number two would be, how do you tap into your courage to express it? Okay, number two. And number three? And number three, do it. Correct. And I, mine is very simple. I have thought about it long and hard, sat on it for years and years, do it now. Because I may die next second. I may not live to express my compassion to my family and my friends. 
do it now. So I'm going I'm promising today that I will reach out to a member of my family, a number of my fa members of my families who have not spoken. I've spoken to them, of course, but I've not exercised true compassion with them. I'm going to go and do that now. I'll be practicing what I've been preaching today. And inshallah, I'll write to them all first as an opening and then I will talk to them. And inshallah, when COVID-19 restrictions are over and when we can relate to one another, connect with one another, we will do it in a more meaningful way. But I will do it. So like my wife said, find courage to go and doing it and do it. Don't wait. That's the bottom line to being successful with your compassion. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is going to go from us very soon. Tell your loved ones you love them. Spend time with them and be compassionate with them. That's my parting word. Amazing discussion on beautiful, blessed month of Ramadan. Compassion. Thank you. Okay, brothers and sisters, Thank about you. books now. Promote your book, please. Time to books. So, <laughs> time to books for books. Um, so those of you who are interested, I have written a book about neuroscience, and I called it the journey from my head to my from the head to my heart. Not to your toe again. Uh, yes. So what I do here is I break down a lot of really interesting things, like how. Um, you know, how we can be more compassionate with ourselves, how to live from the heart, how to connect, how to make it more conscious of how we live and how to integrate of who we are. So you can buy it on our website, the barefootinstitute.com, together and with my, my husband's book. book. My book, I've been talking about it from the beginning, but I'll do it again. Since October. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but this book was published in October. It's a 10-year um, journey, journey in the sense that I've been counseling. Uh, uh, I bought, wrote my first book 10 years ago, Second one is updated. This version, bigger, thicker, and more significant, I believe. Please do buy. Buy as many copies as you can. Give this as a gift of compassion to your friends and family. For the month of Ramadan, take it as a gift and give it to people, or even for Eid. Please buy it from our book website. That's barefootinstitute.com forward slash bookstore. If you've got any questions, anything that you're struggling with, whether it is to do with your emotional struggle, family struggle, or spiritual struggle, just drop us a line. Info at barefootinstitute.com. We'll do our best to help and support you. Well, Ramadan is going to leave us very soon. And before we go, let, let us tell you what we also what we do is at the moment we have Ajmal's course. You can still join. I, I believe people can still join. Yes, yes. If, if you want, want to, to join. It's called though, the 30 Rules of Life. We've done five already. So you'll have you missed the recordings. 25 uh, we have left still. It's on 30rulesoflife.com. Yes. And uh, Salma is asking if I have any workshops on the subject. So I teach spiritual intelligence and emotional intelligence both for couples and individuals so just drop me a line either on facebook um, or send us an email at info at barefootinstitute.com and we can pick up a conversation and see what we can do